Hey physics peeps, we're going to solve out problems for range. And this is dealing with your projectile problems. And it still deals with those same steps uh, that we did in the other problem set. But now there's going to be a little twist here and you'll end up seeing it. But first, I want you to make sure that at the top of your paper you have these three equations written down. Because these are going to be the things whoop, D equals one half or VI times T plus one half AT squared. And VF equals VI plus A times T. We're going to use these equations, but there are some tricks to solving this problem out. One is the setup at the beginning, and two is knowing which equations to use and when to use them. And uh, <clears throat> we'll get into that. But we start off this problem with the same three steps that we did the other set. So step one is next to number one. We're going to split this problem up, x and y. Halfway across the paper, you put y. You want a line dividing them, that's fine. But you keep these two separate. Step two is you list the initial speeds on each side. So it, this was launched horizontally at a speed of 90 meters per second. Because it's horizontally at 90 meters per second, that is the initial speed in the x direction. And it's not up or down at an angle, so the initial speed in the y direction is zero. Step three is saying what's going on in each case. When I say horizontal, the x direction, we pretend like it's going in a straight line, gravity is turned off, and it's just floating there out in space, and it keeps going in that straight line, it goes at a constant speed. And then when this falls down, we pretend it follows this path, and as it goes down, gravity is pulling it down. And so it's accelerating, but it's accelerating at negative 9.8 meters per second squared because that's for gravity those are my first three steps and split it off x and y list initial speeds tell what's happening on each side and now i can get to solving for range but range is a horizontal distance because it's horizontal i actually solve for it on the x side And I'm going to need an equation to solve this out. But the equation that I need has to deal with what's going on on this side. And I have to choose from this, uh, these three over here. And because this is moving at a constant speed, it's not accelerating. I need an equation that does not have acceleration in it. I can't use this equation here in the middle to solve for the distance, the range, because it has acceleration in the equation. So I'm not going to use that. Instead, I use this equation to solve for the range because this has distance in it, but there's no acceleration. So as we work out these problems, I want to make sure that uh, it's clear too that you know that you need to copy all this stuff down. Make sure that you have this down for each problem and then make sure that you also write out the equations and how you solve out each step because it is a groove on how to get into it. And so make sure you copy this down as we go. We copy down the equation first, this V equals D over T. And, and because we're solving for this distance, we're gonna keep that in the equation. But we start putting uh, numbers into the other spots, like the initial, or the speed. Well, it was going at 90 meters per second, but it doesn't matter if it's two seconds, three seconds, four seconds later, it's moving at constant speed, it's always gonna be 90 per second and then it's divided by t uh and the t, t time time oh oh nuts oh man you guys they don't tell you the time oh but the thing about setting up your problems this way is that if you don't know time on one side of the problem you can actually go over to the other side to figure it out and that's what we're going to do so we will come back and solve for this range, but I want you to draw an arrow over to this side. And we're going to solve out for that time, but we need an equation to solve for time. 
I don't have an equation that says t equals. Instead, we have to use one of these equations to work through it backwards and solve for time. The way that we do that is by looking at what we have. First of all, we're, we're accelerating. So our equation has to have acceleration in it to work it out on this side. Well, it's this middle one and bottom one that have acceleration in it. And, but to solve for time, I need to have everything else in the problem. Like if I use this one to solve for time, I need acceleration, I have acceleration. I need the initial speed, I have the initial speed. I need the final speed and the final speed, ah, nuts, I don't have the final speed. I can't use this uh, problem or equation to solve for time. But if I use this equation to solve for time, I need the acceleration, I have acceleration. Half, that's just a number. T, yep, that's time what we're solving for. Initial speed, we have initial speed in the distance. And oh, we actually do have the distance and it's the vertical distance that it's falling. This is falling one meter. So I'm going to use this equation. I want you to copy it down. D equals VI times T plus one half AT squared. Make sure that you copy down everything and make sure you don't forget about that square. It's uh, easy to forget about it. But we're going to start putting things in. We're going to solve for time and bring it back over here and solve for the rest of our problem. And the distance that it falls, though, this has to be a vertical distance. It fell one meter, and but that one meter, we put in for D, but because it's falling one meter, it's actually negative. So make sure that you have it as negative equals the initial speed. The initial speed is zero on this side, times the time, that's what we're solving for, plus one half. You could put in 0.5 if you'd like to, that's fine, times the acceleration. The acceleration is negative 9.8. Times the time squared. We're gonna keep it as t squared. Make sure you don't forget the squared. And now that I have all my information put in, I'm going to go through and solve for time. But there's some things in here that it can be simplified, like 0 times t. Well, 0 times anything, I can just cross it out because it's, it's really 0. But I can simplify these things as well. I'm going to keep this negative 1 here. I want you to copy this down as we're going. Make sure you're copying it down. Equals 1 half times negative 9.8. Put that on my calculator. Okay. And get negative 4.9 times t squared. Then, to get t by itself, I need to undo this negative 4.9. Be careful, you do not do this. You do not add 4.9. These are being multiplied together, so in order to undo negative 4.9, you have to divide by negative 4.9 because these are being multiplied, you have to divide on both sides by negative 4.9. And now I can, uh, I'm going to write it over here. If I take negative 1 divided by negative 4.9, I should end up with 0 0.204. I'm going to just keep it to two or three decimals and equals but that's not my time, that's time squared. So now I have to get time by itself. And the way I do that is by taking the square root, both sides. I get t equals, and it comes out to be 0 0.452. Again, if you're getting something that's a little different, it could be because of rounding and things like that, but if you're in the ballpark, 0.45 something, you're good. Okay. Then, <clears throat> this, we did a lot of work to get to this point. This is not my answer. This is really only part of it. So, this time though, I want you to circle it because you can use this time on both sides of the problem. Time is the only thing that can go back and forth between these two sides. But, we need to bring it back over here because remember we were solving for range. We needed time. So we're going to use that time, 0.452, to solve for the range.
the horizontal distance. But to do this, now I need to multiply these numbers together because it's multiply by 0 0.452 on both sides. In that D, uh, range, I label it as dx because it's a horizontal distance equals, and we get 40.66. Go out two or three decimals, and that is fine. And I box it. And that is my range. Okay. So lots of steps. We're going to go through one more. That was number one. Number two is also part of your assignment. And we're going to start from scratch. But I want you to copy things down as you go. You don't have to recopy down these three equations up here at the top. These you should have written at the top of your uh, page. And you can uh, use these on quizzes and tests. F times A times T squared. And BF equals BI. Oops. Plus A times T. And so <clears throat> for number two, we're um, have a cannonball. It's fired horizontally to the right off a cliff at 9 meters per second. Find the range after it falls from a cliff that's 2.4 meters high. <gasps> okay, so step one, split it up X and Y. Step two is we list out the initial speeds on both sides. It's shot horizontally at 90 meters per second. So horizontally, it's 90 meters per second. And it <clears throat> uh, vertically, its initial speed is zero because it's not shot up or down at an angle. Then horizontally, we pretend it follows a straight line. Gravity's turned off, no air resistance. It's moving at a constant speed. Vertically, it follows this path, gravity is pulling it down, and so it's accelerating at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But to solve for range, it is a horizontal distance. I am solving for it on this side, on the x side. But because it's moving at constant speed, not accelerating, I am using this equation, the top one. B equals D over T to solve out for that range. That means I need to put everything else in where it belongs. I know the speed. It doesn't matter if it's one second, two seconds, three seconds later. And it's always going to be 90 meters per second for this problem. And then <clears throat> I'm going to solve for the distance. So I keep a D. But the time, oh, nuts. I don't know what the time is. So if I don't know it on one side, I go to the other side to figure it out. But to solve for this distance, or sorry, solve for the time, I need to use one of these equations because it's accelerating on the y side. These equations have acceleration in it, but it's this one that ends up uh, having everything that we need to solve for the distance. So I put things in where they belong. This 2.4 meters, that is the vertical distance it falls 2.3 meter, or sorry, 2.4. But because it falls 2.4, it's negative 2.4. That equals the initial speed, which is zero, and times the time plus one half times A, it's the acceleration, negative 9.8, times our T squared. The zero times T, that crosses out. I simplify this out, negative 2.4 equals negative 4.9 times t squared. Don't forget the square. But I have to divide by negative 4.9 on both sides. Don't add negative 4.9 on both sides. And I'm going to bring it over here. If I do uh, negative 2.4 divided by negative 4.9, I get 0 0.48. 9, 7 equals t squared, but I need to take the square root of that. I get t equals 0 0.699. Circle it. Bring it back over here. And, and <clears throat> I multiply these two things together now, and I get my range is equal to 62.99. That's it.